A kao što vam je kao što vam je verovatno poznato, promene, ovaj, odnosno tibetanski plato hrani vodom, ja mislim, više od, više od jedne četvrtine, jedne trećine čovečanstva. Tako da promene koje se tamo dešavaju imaju vrlo daleko sežne geopolitičke, bezbednostne i druge, ovaj, druge uticaje. Evo toliko, mislim, ako bude potrebe u, u diskusiji, ja ću ovaj, dodati još neke informacije. Zongvo, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Sonobodin and Zoran. And uh, sorry about the connection, it's a little bit slow because at the midnight over here. And also, <clears throat> great for your introduction. Sorry, I cannot speak uh, Soviet. Really great to see all of you. And uh, thank you for your introduction. But I think, you know, today's uh, really my talk, and uh, thank you, Zora and uh, Slobodin, for offering me a chance uh, to do this. I think the talk, uh, the introduction already uh, been introduced by Slobodin, and thank you for really a great word. I mean, uh, anything. So I think it's already in time, just got the connection for everything I can see running fine. Can anyone can see what my showing the screen over here? Okay, I see. But as you see, I mean, the snowboarding really last week, Saturday, give us a great uh, talk about the, you know, climate change and also global change, how we have to deal with uh, this. And today I'm going to share a uh, little bit with that because as you know, as uh, snowboarding just uh, introduced, I'm a professor at the uh, Hohai University. And also I'm uh, just currently the vice chair for UNESCO AGP and also the chair for international <coughs> and uh, the conference and uh, since uh, in Asia and Pacific, as you see here on the first slides, the floods and the engineering and the water distillation and also just happening on everywhere, especially on this year. Really, we are facing presidentially how best we're going to feel with the climate change, how best we have to address those things. So, this is the slides I want to show because as uh, the vice uh, president for intergovernment hydrological program of uh, UNESCO. As you can see here, this is the slides. Actually, it's about five years ago, the status from the UNESCO. Also, 20 30, as uh, you all know, we are facing with the 2030 and also the NASA strategic program for IGP. How best want to address the challenge? How we do the, you know, to the adaption to address what we can do for them. Uh, the entire the group. So by 2030, and uh, you know, half of the population will be living in area of the high water stress. With this moment, maybe we're going to have more. As we also we can see, you know, 750 million people, you know, which you're going to assess, you know, the adequate sanitation as, uh, you know, 2030. And uh, the United the nation, the 17 STGs, especially STG6, how best we can provide a good uh, clean water for all of us. Uh, that's the you know, big challenge. And with all those things, what they were facing over here today as the you know, global uh, changes and especially the climate change, how we meet with the you know, such questions with what we can face. And this year, you know, in China, other parts of the world, we all face extreme uh, type of the, you know, water more or less, because as we all know, the water balance in the entire group, you know, more or less, they are balanced. If we somewhere have more water, that means somewhere we're gonna have less water. But look how a globally fresh water resource has been distributed. 
and especially um you know i never been there so yeah hopefully it's not morning someday i can wish the you know our best country you know we call them nanslafu you know i just talk to my students all the colleagues here you know we all know the name of the country nanslafu you know so well you know it's our best friends in eastern europe you know we've been talking about so much but never been there but we don't speak the Soviet, but you know, it's uh, really our brother in another part of the world, you know. Hopefully someday we're gonna look at that part of the world. I mean, we're gonna wish the over there. But in terms of the Asia, look how much population, you know, one third or one quarter of what we have. Look at Asia, you know, how much the water, you know, compared to other parts of the population. But look at start from the 1800, 1900, 2000 to nowadays. But look at what the, the water demand, what adequate and what, what available for whatever we do. But so, oh, you know, just take an example of China, you know. China is a, a big country, but in terms of the water availability, we're kind of one quarter of average, you know, for whatever the entire world, but not mentioning some other country, but even for the Southeast Asia, for those country, but flooding the other things in this, you know, the balance is not even. So that's what they were facing, the water demand and water draw, the dam, everything. So we need more storage. So that's what the here is not just the next us, what they were talking about for the entire world, what food energy, how best we can balance those things. That's the question we are facing, not just in the before, now and I think in the near future. But as we know, triple CO2, double CO2, even nowadays we talk about three times, four times in terms to, you know, 50, hundred years from now, how best we can do this? But as you see, the global mean temperature gonna be increased for sure. Greenhouse gases gonna be key, how best we can deal with the greenhouse gas effect. So as we all know, you know, US and Paris agreement and all the Kyoto and the so and the force. So reducing the emission alone is not cannot do anything anymore. Because the other things as you can see here, the impacts on the hydrologic cycle is unprecedented. I mean, this year is much more than before. If you talk about the water balance, if you think, you know, you check your back, you know, the, the checks, the balance everything. The more water somewhere, that means less water somewhere else. Less water somewhere else, that means water somewhere else. That means the distribution of the water in time and space is uneven than ever before. Maybe we can see, you know, because we're still in geological event, we're still in the cold, you know, spell. So that means through the historical event, we're not as high as uh, before, but as what I mean in the human, uh, the memory, that changes, it's uh, much more. So that's why in the every year, you're gonna see 100 years floods. You know, even last year, uh, as snowboarding last uh, Saturday, talk about the risk, risk, how much risk. In the Xinjiang and uh, Inner Mongolia last year, we have a two dams been destroyed. All the flooding is due to a thousand years return. So that means the historic uh, hydrologic analysis in terms of the return period is not there anymore. About the city flooding, that's even much more. So that's the few pictures I tried to update with uh, 20, uh, 21 this year. But look at the Yanzi last year. Compared to 1998, even this year, just but to last year, <clears throat> just less floods again is compared to the 1998. That's difference. That's because the 
the floods is due to India monsoon and also Pacific, you know, Eastern monsoon. They all together make the flood. Last year alone, that's a huge flood in China, in Yanzi. But luckily, because we have Yanzi, we have uh, all other dams have been built in the last 30 years. So medication of those hundreds of years flood, it's good because of uh, Three Gorge Dam. So for the major rivers, the floods, it's been well controlled here in China and, uh, and so forth. What about droughts? Everywhere, you know, because in the global wise, some will have more water, that means some way are gonna have less water. The water balance for hydrology always I teach my students, hey, water balance, you never, never, you know, underestimate what hydrologists, what they say, water balance always imbalanced. Something have a drought, somewhere are gonna have floods. The more floods, that means somewhere are gonna have more droughts. So with a human being, you know, droughts and floods all come with economic wide impacts. So this uh, slide's a little bit old, but as you can see over here, is the all oh, climate change all gonna affect what we have here economic wise and so forth. But as so what I say here, then it's actually a little bit long. So global water cycle, what happening? Is cycles changing? Of course. Increase risk? Yeah, for sure, yes. Vulnerability, we all as human can, how best we can deal with the, you know, global change and how the the impact of uh, climate change, how bad they're gonna have us, but more disaster, that's all for sure. Because as you just mentioned over here earlier, the water balance at the global size, they're all balanced. If something, you know, in time and space, something have, you know, we have more water, that means somewhere else is gonna have less water. So less water for people, that's also for sure because the imbalance. But all those things, it's not just local, global. We're all living in the earth. We're the small village. How best are we gonna do that? I mean, is the things we have to deal with that, okay? But that's come with, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the United Nations, the SDG 17, the sustainable goals, and particularly for, Intokame hydrological program is the number six. How best we can provide, you know, a clean water for all of us. That's what I do. And that's, you know, what the, uh, we call the HP. <laughs> Sorry, I need to do a little bit of promotion for that because I'm the only scientist on HP in the color and the bureau of the HP. It's really three parts. UNESCO is here is to mobilize international collaboration, how best we can improve the knowledge and innovation to address the water security challenge. The second part is how we can strengthen the science and policy interface to reach water security at the different levels. So this is a part of the last uh, uh, seven years of um, the strategic plan for international, uh, we call the hydrologic program. Now we call the intergovernment hydrologic program. The third one is still the education. How best we can keep everyone on us, how uh, we best understand the, the, the process and, and also HP the goal and how best we can deal with the water. And we know, uh, we drive the vehicle, we drive the car, we drive everything. We know we have the manual to operate. But on the earth, different parts of the earth, different region of the earth, we don't have the menu how best we can, you know, how to use the water, how to use that. But that's the HP start from uh, uh, 1975 until uh, last year. Some the really only the scientists on the, the HP nice uh, strategic plan. Even last night, we had a meeting until 
uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, oh, most missed the meeting today because I uh, check in 11 o'clock. I thought it was uh, six hours away because the time and uh, and the window and also the, the summer time zone. So we are still making the plan for 2022 to 2029, the strategic plan, how best we can do that uh, for the next seven years between before the 2030 uh, for the strategic plan of uh, hydrological program for the HP. So, but anyway, so for the next phase of the IGP, uh, we're focused right now is the five major priority area. Of course, scientific research and innovation, even we can claim last 50 years we so made a large advance in terms of uh, hydrological science. We still in many areas, we really don't know. For example, the Tibet, later on I'm gonna talk about the coal regions. A lot of uh, things we even don't know. How last 50 years, how the global warming, how that affect the glacial retreat, permafrost, and all hydrological response is all totally different than we understood in last 50 years. So how best we can address those things? I think we need to have more research done, have more data collect, and really to look at how the those changes going to affect our hydrological processes on Earth. The other part, it is the education part. Because we don't know those science, we don't understand those process. With those better understanding, how we can get everyone to know. And as I said earlier at the beginning of the last talk, because the Earth, that's the only planet that we know in our universe because the water balance, somewhere have a drought, somewhere gonna have a drought, have a flooding. So always how best that we can, you know, let the whole public to know. But the third part, last night, uh, talk with um, their colleague in Paris, the data gap. You know, the developed country, they already know in 70s, 80s, they have so many, the watershed, basin management program. But is that nowadays all those changes, we still don't know how the hydrological response to those changes. I think this is still the data gap. How best we can address, address this, I think this collaboration, you know, at the ACE strategic plan, the scale at the local, across the region, across the nation, and the global scale how best we can address those, uh, you know, the data knowledge gap. And uh, by the end, it's the best, how can we do with the water management with using those data eventually for our usage, how best, uh, you know, for our to live in this uh, world. But anyway, that's uh, the, the beginning part of how we talk about the global uh, water crisis and also the things really are facing, you know, as uh, what we as a hydrologist never done that before. So here I'm gonna share a little bit the uh, experience. As you can see, those are three pictures. That's our study sites been doing that uh, in the last uh, 10 years. It's how the different components of hydrologic cycle in Tibet and Plateau. And uh, the side story with that, and Tibet the Prado are going to contain so the one major lakes in Tibet Prado. Tibet, uh, the lakes, the service water area is contain almost 50% of the entire China. So what that means, we already found the, the result that we are just writing the paper to submit for publication. So Tibet is in response of a climate change, actually, it's much faster, much responsible than North Pole and South Pole. So here, as you can see, the Asian water pool, the, the, the water almost, as you can see, the red boundary here, that's uh, within the channel, we call the Asia water towers. 
So more than 10 tank major the water, the large rivers is uh, starting from the, the Tibet Plateau. So here you know has the mountains in the in the world, and also more than 10 countries receiving the water, the source water from Tibet the Plateau, and the more than two billion people receiving the water from this region. But anyway, as uh, Tibet, as you can see here, because they are more sensitive to, you know, to other, to climate change, than just the North Pole and South Pole, it's almost, almost twice as much as uh, other parts of the, the regions. So as you can see here in Tibet Plateau, they are receiver three source of the, the moisture coming from. One is from the, uh, west, uh, west, north, that's the western lines. Then also from the south and south, the south, uh, west, that's uh, the India, you know, monsoon. The other part is from the east Pacific monsoon. So Tibet Plateau really receives three parts of the water. And uh, India monsoon, it's about one or two months ahead of. Uh, you know, the, the Eastern monsoon, and they, that's mainly in the summertime. The Western monsoon is yes, in wintertime. So loss of the change really affect precipitation pattern in the uh, Tibet Plateau. So in the, in the last 50 years, so all those changes, as you can see over here, uh, in Tibet Plateau, they all, because the elevation is so much, and in this April, just about uh, five months ago, when wind layer, that's about uh, 5,500 meters above the sea level, uh, which is, you cannot see anywhere. So the Yenzi, that's the water, is 5,500 uh, meters above the sea level. So that's been, Greece has been retreated during the last 50 years. All those changes really have significant impact uh, all those major rivers receiving the water from Tibet the Plateau. But in general, all the water at the beginning, they are increased. Then with the decrease, then with the increase again. But in the colony, most of the water and they receive, especially from the subground, the pump of frost, they are extreme frost increase, especially in the winter time. Yeah, increase. What that means, because the change of the temperature and precipitation and the so forth. So that means in those regions, they are, water is, uh, they are warming much earlier, about two or three weeks ahead of, uh, like say 50 years, 80 years ago. So what that means, the trees, Get the greening is about two weeks ahead, or three weeks ahead. Then when you get into the winter time, they are delayed about two or three weeks. So that means the same amount of water, they are spreading much longer than before. So what that means, the water they are doing, all those uh, precipitation temperatures being changed at the, you know, the other time. And uh, also because of, uh, the India monsoon, the, the monsoon from uh, Pacific Ocean and also westernized their change. Now that no, I was no. speaking <laughs> last uh, 18,000 years ago, and the wind speed is decreased, so the aging is decreased because of the cloudy. So all these things are supposed to have a decrease the precipitation and also relative humidity, but because of the human activity, <coughs> yeah, you have transpiration has been increased. And actually just two days ago, I submitted uh, a paper to Nature Climate Change. We found in those uh, arid dust points, the trees is dying. We saw the global warming and temperature increase. And all those is supposed to give us a better uh, ecosystem production, 
but it is not because the limitation of the of the water availability in those regions because the increased temperature and also you know minimize the water availability or availability for those uh, uh, the ecosystem actually they are uh, access the water is uh, it's uh, it's changed so this is the way project to other scientists to look at you know in terms of how the warming we think about the triple co2 we're not just double co2 2050 triple co2 maybe even first time of the co2 in the air but you know 70 years from now what the happening that's really going to have a significant effect on that. So impact on water cycle over the top the plateau is uh, significant. As I mentioned at the beginning, and uh, top the plateau the response is much higher than other parts. And top the plateau is uh, much bigger. In the eastern part of the plateau, that's uh, Yellow River, Yenzi, and on the west, that's Queen and the Hindu rivers. On the south, west, where Mekong, all other things, as I mentioned over here, they are changing all different ones. But for sure, the seasonally and especially all the geological, you know, and the geographical differences is tremendous. All instances of change, how that affect us. That's, that's the, the new, calculation we just did for all those different regions. So the change is different. As I mentioned earlier, on the eastern part, to the south, southwest, to the northeast of region, and those regions with south going to be temperature increase, and the ecosystem production going to be more, but actually it's not. Some of the trees are dying. And also on the western part of <laughs> on the Tibet Plateau, and actually the lake is the level is decreasing because we receive uh, less uh, precipitation. So all those things, as all we think about, even nowadays. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, but anyway. So this is a diagram we just evaluated last uh, 50 years, how the permafrost has been decreased. So to bet the plateau, we have three different kinds of uh, uh, the permafrost, uh, same as uh, compressing to the uh, Canada, which is nobody so work with. And uh, in to bet the plateau, there used to be, you know, a huge amount of area, which is the permanent permafrost. Nowadays, we have a seasonal permafrost. I just uh, say, you know, just a uh, few lines uh, earlier. And uh, last year, we went to Tibet Plateau, you know, close to the Christmas, we suddenly be very cold. Actually, over there, it's warmly in Nanjing. The, all the grizzle, the snow has been increased, not mentioning just the permafrost. As you can see over here, the, all the changes. So this slide is uh, quite old, it's uh, 2009 from radio, from the um, NASA, uh, which is uh, uh, Jamie Femenegodi, which is now is working in Canada. So what that means from the global grizz data, the Tibet Plateau, especially in the southern part, is really been decreased, you know, the water balance. What that means, receive less water, and also because the uh, degradation of the glacier and the permafrost. So all those things as uh, for hydrology, and as uh, snowboarding warm me a few weeks ago, if you want to give a talk, I try to talk about it in general. But as a hydrologist, we see all those phenomena. How best, as a hydrologist, how best we're going to address those issues? It's really require systematic study, you know, not just the thing about, you know, uh, from the remote sensing, doing the paperwork. We have to be in the field. 
a lot of the, you know, even the, the runoff and the production is different what we saw before. Some the, you know, like a hot air and saturation flow and everything in the same spark and happening at different regions, different seasons. How best we're gonna address those issues? That's what we, we're gonna do. But here, I'm gonna just show you a few more slides uh, here we can have more discussion what we can do here or just the workflow security in Tibet plateau because the issue here as i mentioned earlier in Tibet plateau so the one lakes we have cooling you know about last uh, 16,000 years ago since the last glacial maximum uh, basically at that time the Tibet everything's been covered by glacier so this uh, picture actually see over here the picture I took in April. You look little stats that's over here. That's all we call the egg, the big car, you know, about two tons of each. It's uh it's a uh, huge. So this picture is really showing how beautiful over there. So we've been building up a different staging of here, see? Number one, that's uh, Lhasa, that's the capital for uh, the Tibet the district over here, the province. Then also we build different part, the southern part of boundary, that's Himalaya, okay? And the southern part is uh, India. Then the number seven is the six, it's highest of the, the largest river basin, we call the Yalu Zambu. And later on, we do the all to the east, make a turn, go south to the India, you went to, to Bangladesh and to the uh, Indian Ocean, which is the Bank Bay, okay? And here we build, the, right now we have a central lab on the number one, that's the, the central part. And also we have a six stations being built for uh, this uh, arable basins. And that's the building we had. Uh, we are almost in fully operation. Hopefully, uh, snowboarding and all the colleagues, you're welcome to come here. This is a beautiful part. But here, because the elevation is so high, the, the oxygen level is uh, uh, much less. But here, the last office is uh, about 3,600 meters above the sea level. So it's not uh, uh, that bad. And here's the part. Really, we like this the best uh, the station we have. We have uh, 15 acres of land. As you can see on the right, the up bigger. So we have uh, two buildings. It's been built. We have an office. We have a living quarter. And also we have all the labs over here. On the hill slope, the best thing is we have a six, 600 acres of land. We can do what we can do for the Correlation hydrology and everything. So we do from the edge of the mountains all the way to the level edge from the bottom part. We got the, you know, all the, the catchment, everything we can absorb. And the Pong, I think is, uh, it's also an like, see Jan Pong. So he's in charge of the, the permafrost area. Uh, later I'm gonna have a little bit introduced uh, on that. So this part is also too, it's a uh, middle reach of the uh, Yalu Zambu, you know, close to Lhasa. It's the eastern part of the Himalaya. So this also up to 15, uh, 600 meters above the sea level. So as you can see over here, we've been there always, all the way to the top. And that's beautiful when you're there. But the weather's changed dramatically uh, in some events. Just 15 minutes, 15 minutes, the temperature drop more than 20 degrees, you know. Um, but the natural wonder, you know, it is beautiful. We have the lab, we have the, the observation system for everything from one drop of the snow, the pomo frost, and to the level flood. And also we measure all the greenhouse gas and all other, you know, chemicals. So this is uh, the, the students been doing since last year. Um, 
today's uh, slides are just late. Otherwise, I can get their pictures, you know, in last two trips. Some they only just come back uh, a few days ago. But here, you know, look as beautiful on the picture, but to be there, it's not easy because the oxygen level over there is about 30%, whatever can, you know, please in the in the, 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 the normal case. But anyway, it, it's good. Well, what we're doing right now, it's really four major approach, what we're gonna do. But of course, it's the permafrost that change. And uh, it's influenced on the greenhouse emission on top of it. So we are measuring every one and a half months and different levels, how we can check how much greenhouse gas from those areas. This area is not just small, it's a pretty big. And this is a uh, Chengdu since uh, Peng is leading uh, on this one. It's been, you know, uh, measuring uh, lots of different parts of since uh, in, since the last, 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 it's uh, about 18, 18 months now. And Peng is right now is uh, have a drilling on the head of Yanzi. That's also the elevation is about 15, uh, 5,500 above the sea level. So I think with low data coming out, gonna be, uh, I think a good president uh, never, nobody have done that before. And the uh, second part is uh, really, we have a measuring on uh, head water of the Mekong, we call the Lantan, Mekong, Lantan, the, the rivers. So what we do is uh, under the different trees, either on the uh, different sides of the trees, to look at how the hydrologic is within one trees, how the trees are gonna be breathed out with the sunlight, with the precipitation, snow, everything, how the water balance with the small, just the one tree. So this tree is, uh, the water has been observed for last 15, months uh, already, I think uh, one paper is uh, preparing for that. So this is uh, some of the data is doing that. So what do we do? Because of this switching, it's uh, not easy to access, that's for sure. The second, for Tibet, we don't have an accurate account of water balance over there. How much water coming in? How much water has been evaporated? How much water goes to the you know, level, how much water goes to the ground, eventually come back to the, you know, the channel network to everything. So all those data, so today you're gonna see all those data. That's, you know, we're even having any less loss yet because all the data come in. When uh, colleagues, uh, professor going there, they walk there and they come back, they are tired, they lack of oxygen, even a car shopping, this afternoon, kind of a steal. Uh, the things what they have. If you go to the Tibet Plateau, you lack of oxygen, right? No enough oxygen. Why you come back? Because you have been used to the, you know, situation over there. You come down. You feel like you too. You have too much oxygen. You feel like you know you drunk up all oxygen. You have to take one week or ten days to really get the equivalent uh, on that. But the so part is, uh, we are measuring, look at the, all the dots on the right hand. The rivers, more than 100 spots. We're measuring all the CO2, all the greenhouse gases, messing, and everything. So we look at each trip from the head of the water to all the way to the, to the out of the, you know, the, the watershed, it took more than 45 days. So we take three groups, three groups from the 6,000 meters above the sea level, the measuring all the greenhouse gases. To see all the greenhouse gases, you know, from the inland water in Tobet Plateau in response of the climate change. And this is a totally different than what we saw for any of those scientists, you know, been thinking. So here also, at each profile, slow from beginning of the degrees all the way to all lot 
out of the world, the, the watershed were mentioning all the profile, how the permafrost has been changed. Because those is the key, how they either release the CO2, you know, the medicine and the all other things, especially also different uh, rainfall events, and how they're gonna affect the, the processes too. And also we look at the surface groundwater interactions and on those regions which we use the isotopes uh, include the, the stable isotope, the oxygen and hydrogen. And also we use the radar to look at the groundwater surface interactions. But also water is from last year. So this year, because um, I haven't put the, all those pictures together, Hopefully, I mean, the snowboard is someday we can travel to a lot of But low part of which it's beautiful. They're all greeny, everything is good. Uh, the elevation about the two, 2,500, you know, above this level. And all those things, uh, you know, but the data I was showing here, just for today, you know, the sharing and all the people we haven't let up uh, yet because uh, Snowboarding emailed me a few weeks ago, wanted to give a, a Soviet colleague a, a talk. And the talk is, uh, you know, I put together just uh, even this morning um, for that. Maybe it's not that comprehensive, but it's the first showing uh, what they've been doing in Tibet uh, Plateau. As you, you can see here, Tibet Plateau is not the, just the traditional hydrologic approach you can really address those issues. And traditional approach is not working here. You know, we need to do more. I already spent last uh, four years, so as to say that more than $150 million has been invested. We still only have a scratch uh, what happening, but that's a, a good, good, good try. You know, at least we know different part all that really what the cycle has been doing over here. So we need more, how best we can to do this with more people going to Tibet, how best that we can really to understand those hydrologic processes. What the security issue here in terms of the ecological restoration, ecological pro protection, that's what we need to do. I mean, you know, because we lack of data, we lack of knowledge, we lack of everything, you know. So this the picture I just taking on the row. So everything here is all original. And they come back to A, I have a three more slides I want to share with you. As uh, IGP, the intergovernment the hydrological uh, program over here, because I'm the vice chair, I'm uh, running for the chair for the next one, and also the chair for the Asian Pacific regions. So the water governance, it's really the foundation how best they're gonna do that. And HP really have the combination of uh, 36 of country council members and also have uh, HP the bureau, which consists of one chair, uh, five vice chair with for different uh, six regions. So six regions include from, uh, you guys belong to the East Europe, Europe, Arabia and uh, North American uh, with the, the other part and the South American and the Asia Pacific and so forth. So look, about the 36 uh, countries, but education always the key to get everyone to know how best that we can address the water security. If all we talk about science, talk about what research we can do a great public good papers, but without everyone involved, we cannot get the security really going. So what we do is really to, to get that. So technology nowadays is really advanced. How best we can use this water, water, water resource management. Management, that's the key, you know, how best we can do that. But without, I just say in the previous slides, without best, education in water for everyone, we cannot get all the help. You can get better knowledge, but without everyone to save the water, we cannot save the water, you know? So 
for that part and the uh, radium pretty rush i think the the talk is uh i don't know the continuation is what i think as a hydrologist i don't know the snowboarding uh asked me to be uh, more in common language everybody understand but hopefully i mean you know the maybe it's the midnight i'm kind of <laughs> you know with that and uh, really thank you for offering me opportunity to speak over here and uh, that's uh, what i want to devote my lecture for, for that thank you snowboarding i'm done with uh, my presentation and uh, also, I'm not. Yeah, thank you very much, Don. But I'm not sure is Zoran going to say a few words or. Thank you very much, Mr. Zong, for your excellent, a very, very illustrative presentation. I know that it's it's too late in in, in China, but I think there are a lot of questions uh, interested in, in, uh, for for our people. Uh, shall we start with with your discussion, Slobodan? Okay, I just would like to thank Zongbo also for the presentation yeah. and uh, I, I, you know, even not understanding every element of your talk, it is clear how important is that research that you are kind of doing in the northern regions of the Tibetan plateau on general understanding of the processes uh, that are kind of happening in under the changing climate, the processes that are affecting, you know, the water cycle, the processes that are then affecting basically exposure of the people to either too much water or not enough water. Um, Zongbo, I have a kind of two questions or maybe comments and questions. And the, the, the first one is uh, more kind of related to kind of hydrology and science. And the second one more related to, you know, kind of general management and, and security What well, this group may be more interested. But uh, yesterday or two days ago, uh, President Biden from US emphasized the importance of the permafrost and the methane emissions. And uh, uh, actually, he didn't talk too much about uh, permafrost. He was talking about methane. And, you know, on our TVs now we are seeing, you know, we need to kill all the uh, cows. We need to get rid of, you know, because the cows are, cows are emitting, you know, the methane and so on. <laughs> uh, but what is what was missing and what I see as a very important because of the location where I am, northern Canada, northern uh, Russia, uh, the, the, the high elevations of Asian plateaus and so on are all, uh, all exposed to due to the global warming melt of the permafrost. Uh, the colleague, just in, in, in our language, the colleague who is not a toliko hydrology, uh, when a permafrost is the površin, deo zemljišta koji je zaleđen u toku čitavog, uh, čitave godine. Uh, permafrost znači taj led sprečava raspadanje i organskih materija i, i, i lučenje metana koji je inače jako potentan gaz uh, um, staklene bašte, mnogo potentniji nego što je ugljen dioksid. So what I think we are seeing in, in, in these regions, Northern Canada, Northern Russia, in, in uh, Tibet and so on is that we are already entering into very serious feedback processes, melting of the permafrost and the release of the methane are initiating or speeding up the global warming, which is in the, you know, uh, in return, uh, increasing the melt. And to me, some of the scientific work is actually showing once when these processes are initiated, we are in deep trouble because that is un basically unstoppable. It's the type of positive feedback which may be really pushing us over the over the. Uh, so maybe if you can comment based on your work on the perm permafrost, you know, I would like that. And I'll immediately say the second question and the comment. And that's a Zongbo is right now working with UNESCO IHP program, International Hydrology, uh, International Hydrology Program uh, against UNESCO, which is a science, 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 a
Um, I was also representing Canada for four years on UNESCO and uh, IHP. And what is interesting to me is how these international efforts uh, can help and enforce and bring some change on this. We do have programs under the UNESCO. We do uh, come up with the research. We, we even come up with some kind of recommendations to the governments, but this is where everything kind of ends. And, and I think what we are now seeing in, in Glasgow is very similar. I mean, we, you know, all the presidents came, they gave their own speeches now, our, our news this morning, we're showing the people outside and what the people are, you know, who are protesting and things like that. So what is going on inside the negotiations is kind of disappearing already from the news. So, so I'm really concerned how these international, you know, international collaborative efforts can be enforced. How can we bring, and, and we are all facing very serious, very serious challenges. There is no question about that. So Zongbo, permafrost and this kind of international collaboration. That's a, that's a two great, great questions, really snowballing for your bringing this up. And also at the early part, you uh, speak uh, English and Soviet and uh, so forth. Hopefully someday I can be in Belgrade to learn some of the Soviet too, the beautiful country, beautiful capital city. So. Zoran, Zoran is going to invite you to Belgrade and then you- oh, really? <laughs> as, as, as soon as possible, because uh, oh. we are preparing next uh, next year in September, global conference on risk and crisis oh. management in Dubrovnik. So you are welcome to Belgrade also in Croatia. Wow, salute, salute to that. I mean, thank yeah. you for, for your invitation. I want Thank to be you. there, you know, it's uh, been thinking about going there for, for a long time I and mean, it's great. I mean, I just feel, you know, because the boarding is very tall, I don't feel I just be there too short, you know, kind of <laughs> nobody can see me. <laughs> but anyway, going back to uh, snowboarding, those uh, two questions, that's uh, so important, what they want to face. The first of all, on the form of flux. Permafrost. Okay, I just gave you an example. Really, in hit the water of Yellow River. See, you have a piece of ice on the table, okay? Just one, the square of the table of the ice. So when you see a piece of ice, they're gonna melt with certain spot, right? The weak spot. So those spot gonna melt with the little, little, little one. The little one gonna combine with the two, three more little one becomes a part of water, okay? So that's a, more like a part of water become a small lakes. Small lakes are gonna link with uh, large lakes. So when they penetrate the whole the ice table, boom, all the water gonna be gone. Then medium lakes gonna be gone. Large lakes gonna be still more water. So the lakes have been going with uh, different uh, temperature places. So in yellow level, they go through from uh, 50s with many small lakes to the 70s with the median lakes number increase. Then the large lakes expansion. So more water to the larger, because as you can see, small lakes, median lakes to the larger, they all going. So now the into the median lakes going to disappear more. So logic lakes because the geographic, uh, topographic uh, features, they are stay there. Okay, so that's the surface part of the permafrost. So permafrost here in Tibet is different from the Canada, from the the South Pole. So that's the first part. The second part with that, because some the area used to be permanent frozen. Mm -hmm. See, they are gone. They are more like active part than pomo. The pomo, permanent uh, permafrost been retreat, retreated to the up level. So those waters are daisy, come water, they don't have a storage anymore. They come and go every year. So in the 80s and 90s, in those rivers, their stream flow increase is due to the degradation of the permafrost. And with the surface groundwater interaction and so forth. 
So but anyway, I don't want to get the Zola and all the other not hydrologists to understand those. So those things never happened before. We don't have a model. We don't have a conceptual model how you know those waters have been changed. We all have a Hodonia runoff. We have a saturation runoff. But here, everything you see, it's not what we described you before. Give you an example. For example, during the melting at melting time, right? The water, because of gravitation, water can going down high to low, right? The water slew the megalopole because uh, during the frozen period, because of the ice, when the water become ice, the expansion. So those pour the channels are getting bigger. So when it moves away, the water, boom, they drop because of the gravitation. Then water drop to the deep, like 30 centimeters, 50 centimeters, the head to the pomo, pomulant frozen layer, the water go horizontally. When it keep going, the water, because of the temperature, energy change, slowly, slowly, they're going to be frozen again. They'll stop. So and the, why, in the case in the case of Tibet and and kind of northern uh, northern regions, the yeah. melt uh, that seasonal character of the right. of the permafrost melt is different from what we are experiencing in Canada and Russia. We are yeah, the kind of melt is the right. source of the emissions that are kind of you know warming the climate further. I can understand that. Yeah, that, that's right. Can, can it, yeah, can you comment That's on right. the? Can you comment yeah. on that international relationship? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, 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 thank you for, because uh, even in the middle I thought about the carrier for that. For the international wise, I mean the IGP. I mean, I'm coming back to the IGP. I mean the, because the Pomo Plus, we have a collaboration with uh, Canadian uh, colleagues in the Victoria in UBC and the so forth so on that part. This is some similarity, but uh, most of the part they are, they are quite uh, different because the elevation change. But in Tibet, they change rapidly. But in those areas, because the elevation change, the whole area, they are, you know, in general, they are more uniform. Other than, you know, the elevation change from 10 meters, one kilometer, so they're all different regimes. But for the IGP on that international wise, I mean, the way, still try to do best we can. Last two years, I'll be the chair for the, the Asian Pacific region and also the vice chair for the, the IGP for the global wise. And uh, while I'm moving very slow, I'm supposed to be in Paris, you know, because the vaccination, verification from France to Europe, they don't recognize the Chinese ones. I have to be the quarantine, all those things, even the embassy is now being for the visa and so forth. So we have been slow a bit last couple of years because of the COVID, the you know the the pandemic. But I think you know, as uh, President Biden, you know, a few days ago, he will talk. But still, we need to work together to do that. But we have been slow. I try to promote this really for developed country to offer more resource for development country, especially Asia Pacific is the suffering countries because Asia Pacific, we have the populations almost one third of the entire world's you know, population. But in terms of the water, we're only one fifth of the all total available water for the entire world. And the most country in uh, Asia is underdeveloped. So what that means, the economy wise, it's uh, we don't have enough resources to address that. But of course, the training, you know, in last 10 or 20 years, they have economic wise uh, uh, doing well. Uh, President C want to do more. But in terms of other countries, uh, still so much behind. But I think uh, as uh, AGP, the one goal I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, is the education, get everyone ready to understand this is not this issue. 
it doesn't matter your rich, your poor. You know, every board have rights to every drop of the water. But in terms of how best we can protect those water, that's what we want to do, you know. So that means the developed country, they have to do more responsibility to offer more resources, how best they can help the, you know, those country, developing country to do those things. But still, we are, we are on the way, even for the, I'm drafting for the next nine, 2022 to 2029 strategic plan for intergovernment hydrologic program. But it's tough. We can write all scientific, you know, we can really build our own paradise. But what's the resource we're going to do that? But I think that's the, the lack of things. So that's why. I want to be the chair for next two years. I'm already working on that next couple of weeks because the election is coming up on 25th. To do that, to secure the resource to do that and to have more dialogue among the countries, among the regions, especially for lands, those countries share the boundary of the aquifers, different rivers, because all those water, you know, it's a uh, uh, global earth. As a the beginning of my talk, we have the menu to drive the car. We don't have the menu how to operate what they are behaving on earth. But I think, you know, as a uh, HP, I've been involved in the last five years. So that's the things I think we need to do more, not just the science. Science is snowboarding. And uh, you are the best in risk assessment and all those things. I'm doing the good work on the Tibet, but that's not enough. We need to get everyone, every citizen on us. We need to be on the same page, how best they can address the water security issue. Thank you, Zogdor. Thank you. I see that we have uh, questions. Yes, we have but two questions from two participants. Sonia Tragovic, first one. Sonia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Yu. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, lecture. It is always uh, a delight to hear um, those kind of lectures from different perspectives coming from professors, coming from uh, some other parts of the world. Uh, my question will regard the technology that could help us to pres preserve the drinkable uh, water and to sustain the healthy balance of uh, water throughout the countries and the world uh, region. So uh, recently I've seen uh, an interesting documentary uh, online about uh, the project that China is uh, conducting. Um, so as far as I, I understand, the southern parts of the China get much more water than the northern ones. So the northern ones are much drier and suffer the higher risk of water scarcity. But what the scientists and the technologists uh, have done is uh, was uh, so they've built some kind of a systems that were pulling the water from the south uh, to mm -hmm. the north. So if you could tell us something more about uh, this uh, particular project, and of course, if you could uh, tell us if those kind of solutions are applicable in some other parts of the world, and are there some kind of technologies that are currently being developed that could help uh, everybody from interest industry to a uh, particular uh, individual, for example, a small farmer in, in Africa, because uh, I think that there can be many solutions. For example, we could recycle water as much as we can. We could maybe invent some kind of um, devices that would collect water from mist, for example. So uh, are there some kind of developments in that field? And could you give some advice and some good, and could you share some good practices from China uh, for us in Europe and in all other parts of the world? And thank you very much and receive my warm greetings from Zagreb, Croatia. Wow, <laughs> Croatia. Sanjio, that's, uh, that's a really great uh, question uh, for that. I mean, you know, I appreciate your you know, you're speaking on, on, on this part. And uh, it is, uh, you know, the top, 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 the things uh, we need to do. But as you can see, I mean, the, 
different technologies have been doing that. Harvest the water from different parts of the air, for example, in Africa. The air is dry, you know, the daytime and nighttime, you can have this, that's, you know, cactus, they can survive in desert. So that means they are harvesting the moisture in the night and so forth. But let me come back to the, to the, to the Chinese one. China, as you can see, uh, Sanjia is pretty much understand the Chinese the geography. The southern part, the more water the flooding, Yanzi, and in the northern part, in the between is uh, is uh, five hole level, which is uh, the humid and uh, the semi dry, semi humid area. Then the yellow level and Beijing, it's it's a semi area area. So. So what that means, uh, less water. But in China, since uh, thousand thousand years ago, the devotion projects been going, you know, for so long. Especially in last uh, thirty years, and uh, water been diverted from uh, Yanzi to Yellow River all the way to Beijing. So we talk about thousand meters of a uh, devotion project. And so the water is built in China a few times, quite a few times, even in Beijing and Nanjing. And hopefully Sanjiu someday can come here, we can travel along from the Great Canyon all the way from Hanzhou to Beijing, we call Hanzhou, Beijing, uh, Great Canyon. So that's been dark about 3,000, 2,000 years ago. Actually, 1,500 years ago has been uh, doing that. So they have uh, so many pumping stations, pump all the water because Yanzi in the southern part, they are wet, have more water, you know, doing that. Because Shanghai, anybody been in Shanghai? I think snowboarding has been in Shanghai for a few times. Shanghai, 150 years, there's no Shanghai. So Nanjing is the coast area for the, for the, for the Yellow Sea, for the eastern part of China coast area. Because the Yanzi submit so much sediment, you know, out, start building the Shanghai and the area and so forth. But anyway, we lost because in the southern part, as you just know, uh, Sonia and say, the southern part is more water because the Indian monsoon and also from Pacific Asia monsoon coming in East Asia. So those water, Chinese has been built three Lot. One is the, from the east part from Nanjing. So next time when the boarding come here, I need to take him to the to the north part of Yanzi with all the pumping station, pump all the water goes up, goes up, then mount above the yellow levels uh, water level, then let water go through part all the way to the Beijing. So this is the east lot how. Chinese are gonna use the water in balance, you know, naturally. So that's one part. The other part is from uh, Wuhan. I think we'll probably snowboarding has been Wuhan too. That's the middle part of Yanzi. So that part also we have uh, uh, more than 10 million square, square cubic, cubic meters of water has been transferred from that through the end of the yellow level, all the way go to Beijing. So those water, since only a small way around, to really to ease up the, the water you know, shortage in northern part of China. Actually, California has tried to do that too. I mean, uh, northern, southern and so forth uh, for that. But anyway, I think, you know, try to answer all the Sonia one the lesson. I think, uh, Sonia, next time, when next year, the pandemic is over, you know, come over to China, you know, it's all I'm part of wondering why you to really come to see. I can talk about whole, you know, one hour to do that, this uh, different part. I think the one thing is because uh, luckily China in last 20 years, it's been really developed their own, the working force. So what I mean, they got the manpower. They got an economic uh, support to do those things. Otherwise, nothing can go, you know, next miles. Thank you, Sonia. 
thank you again and thank you for the invitation. Sanya, I see your hands. Would you yeah. like to, to, to say, to comment something or to ask a question to Zongo? Please. I wanted to uh, ask uh. a question. Uh, hello, Mr. Zongo. Uh, Sanya Wojcic is speaking. I'm a geopolitical analyst uh, mm -hmm. from France and I'm glad to meet you. Yeah, me too. Um, you understand that your speciality is not mine. My speciality is uh, transdisciplinarity uh, in international relations. Mm -hmm. It means it is really related to your research field as um, geopolitics um, of um, uh, climate changes uh, and uh, geopolitics of water. Uh, is a topic uh, we are uh, discussing about. Uh, almost in France, as you know, in France, we are uh, champions in the battle against uh, climate changes. And I think that's, that's the problem. As uh, no one disputes climate change, but on the, under, on the other hand, many are those who think that the role of men in this change is oversized. I could see in your speech that I enjoyed uh, that your opinion is rather balanced. Um, however, uh, it, there are many doubts about uh, reports with st statistics to support it, which affirms that the man who that, that it is the man who is 100% at the origin of these changes do, during the last 150 years. Um, however, climate change is part of the natural cycle and uh, mankind has already experienced periods of heating and cooling. Uh, scientists responded that these changes between the North and 19th century were regional and not global. Unlike the warming uh, of the uh, last 150 uh, years. Uh, and uh, uh, it is this answer that gives rise to doubt. My question is, by what miracle can regional climate change remain isolated and, not and do not influence global climate change? Moreover, how can we not suspect that the usual manipulations of statistics are not once again at the service of geopolitics? Thank you. Wow. Uh, Sonia, this is uh, Sanjo. Sanya. Sanya. Sanya, Sanya. Sorry about the uh, pronunciation. Wow, that's a great question. I mean, the geopolitics, that's always climate change, sharing the water and the boundary. As I mentioned earlier, the climate change is not just local, it's off the national boundary and the global wise. And uh, as you can see, so many people, they don't believe the climate change. Let's say, go back to 10 or 15 years. You know, just talk about last uh, president of the uh, United States, Donald Trump. All of a sudden, they don't believe on that. But here, but look at last 10 years, uh, look at the statistics, look at the intensity of uh, and the frequency of those extreme events. What that means, flooding, droughts on the local scale, global scale, regional scale, it's everywhere. Whether you want to believe or not, but as a geologist, we can see we're still on the little ice age, okay? In the global wise, we talk about, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands, even billions of years, the historic event. We're still in the temperatures decrease. But compared to those uh, geological events, our event, our lifetime, so we talk about tens, hundred years. But this violation, we are doing like that. But losses are killing things for that. 
But as I mentioned just earlier on my the presentation, uh, you can see the topet, the glacial retreating, permafrost degradation, that's uh, significant. The temperature is increased every year, right? Global average. But global average temperature increase is not the killing factor. Give you an example. We are talk, you are in your room, I am in my room, right? We're all just one guy. That's hydrologic cycle, the human cycle. But if we have a few more kids, that means the mutant moisture, water molecule into our room. You know, there's a chaos, right? We still have the same balance. That means the same balance, more water somewhere else. That means less water somewhere other else. So what that means, that's what we call the extreme event. It's not that we're gonna do more, less water, more water, just by that fact alone, imbalance. That means more water somewhere else, that means flat. Less water somewhere else, that'd be droughts. So last year, last year, all droughts, all the flooding gonna affect us for, for, for that. In terms of the geopolitics for that, for example, in China, in we call the Chinese the, the water tower, the Tibet Plateau. So much as since, you know, the water going through the, like Mekong, Lantan Jiang alone, that country received the water going through that. You know, so those water changes gonna affect life for those people living along those river banks. So that's the best, how we're gonna address that. That's I have to cross the boundary. We have to talk together. We have to mitigate the flooding. We have to mitigate the droughts together. Otherwise, same amount of water because of the in distribution in time and space, right? Same amount of water. You know, if you have more water coming in, how best they can control those water. If you don't control where, well, there'll be flooding, right? All water's gone. Then when floods, all the water is gone. They're gonna be drawed next season coming in. So all those things, I think is uh, it is a thing. So we want to address uh, all together for that. I mean, you know, you are you are the the question. I think I like it. I mean, hopefully I come back and gonna look at the video uh, with your you know questions on that. I think that's all the international. And also in the government, the hydrological point we want to address. It's not just the science, it's all, we all have to work together to best, uh, you know, to address this challenge. But the one thing for sure, I want to tell you, the historical loss events, they say there's no climate change and no force, but hey, they are talking about thousands, 10,000, millions time event. We are talking about, we are living in this war, tens, Hundreds the most, right? But how are we gonna see the changes already? You know, you want to see the climate changes here, but still talk about like Donald Trump we say, we don't see a climate change, how that impact us. I think that's uh, not real, you know, you see more extreme event. Every year, there's so many city, they have been experienced hundred years, thousand years of floods, right? And uh, probably lots of, uh, uh, as we don't see this also droughts. I think uh, snowboarding can address this risk. Really, it's much more than before. We're not talking about just one, two times more. I think probably more. I mean, snowboarding, maybe you can, you know, add a few more sentences over here. I mean, give us a hard risk we already experienced due to the climate change. How that <laughs> That that's okay. I think Sanya Sanya is happy. Uh, I, yeah, I would, thank you. Yeah, I would prefer if we can get some other people to also share with us the, their comments or questions. If anyone has difficulties with English, I'm ready to translate. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, Mr. Zongwe, you are you are right. Everything is in balance, in, in equilibrium. Right. Let me say dynamic uh, equilibrium. Uh, um, you you emphasize the importance of uh, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach to, to water knowledge. I totally agree with, with, with that statement. 
Uh, I hope you will uh, send us your presentation because I'm sure a lot of my students, faculty of Sec security studies are interested in, in that topic uh, from the point of view of security. Uh, and uh, let me let me uh, say and let me ask one one question to you uh, the struggle for uh, water resources uh, as we know has become a geopolitical but also an uh, internal political uh, issue uh, privatization of of water resources is one of the uh, top issues on the domestic political and and economic scene in in, in serbia uh, one of the burning topics uh, is the privatization of the Jaroslav Czerny Water Institute in Serbia. Uh, th this institute uh, which is uh, a prominent scientific institution in Serbia from the aspect of uh, water governance, participating in uh, numerous water management projects. Uh, in addition, the institute is the owner of intellectual property. So the uh, sale of that property may have uh, consequences for national security as well. Uh, how do you see the, 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 uh, the challenges of uh, privatization of, of such institution, scientific institution? Thank you. Uh, let me, Zongbo, before you answer, <laughs> let me just say, first 10 years, of my professional career are mm. from that particular institute. Yes, I know. <laughs> I was working at the beginning after graduation where I did my master's and, and then I really? left, you know, to do the PhD wow. in, in US. Wow. 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 Slobodin, thank you for, for the note. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, can I add the question to Zoran? Yeah. Question, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, uh, Okay, okay, because it's uh, really similar, you know. Uh, Mr. Zongbo, thank you very much for excellent uh, lecture and uh, warm regards uh, from uh, Reni Dubrovnik uh, today. Croatia, uh, my name is Jadran Gapolovic, uh, I'm a professor at Libertas University in Zagreb, and uh, my question is also related the to water uh, privatization and the uh, geopolitical uh, conflicts uh, that are becoming uh, more frequent uh, and uh, uh, as a uh, UN expert uh, how do you look uh, of uh, water uh, resource uh, can we talk about uh, public good and uh, goods and uh, human rights uh, or uh, just about uh, market and uh, I would like uh, to add uh, something. Uh, the water is, uh, as a geopolitical uh, resource, is a very, very frequent uh, topic uh, of my students uh, also in their dissertations. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, I cannot, your name is too long. Can you speak? Uh, uh, yes, Yadranka. It's uh, hard. Yadranka. Yadranka. <laughs> Yadranka. Totally sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but, but anyway, that, that's Sorry, a beautiful Zoran. name. A beautiful <laughs> name. The pronunciation of it is Yadin Khan. Like, like, like Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea. Oh, okay. Adriatic. Okay. oh that's, a, that's even okay. much better. It's easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's great for Zoran and uh, Khan. Uh, your questions on that, it's um, important. I mean, you know, as you can see, the most uh, the the conflicts between the country all because of water. But look at uh, Palestinian Israel. Okay, they supposed to share the same the water things. Why they want to take that te part of territory? I I don't know. I don't speak uh, whatever the political balance uh, one way or another. But the water balance. The water is always for the human culture, right? I mean, as a Chinese, Chinese culture is the water culture. The first imperial were called the Dayu. That's because they can control the water doing the water management. The Chinese culture, you know, getting better, right? So the better water management, the better culture development, the, all the government, they're doing that for sure. So Zoran, for all of you, Doing things, I mean, 
sad to see, you know, the one country being subdivided different parts of that because you're sharing the same water resource, different regions. But here uh, in China, just about five years ago, President Xi launched a program. So we do the master for each part of the rail basins. Different parts of rail basins all have masters. So each part, you need to control, you need to manage that water quality to give to the next part. You know, if you're downstream, you have the rights for the upstream, right? The water's been running that for a long time. You need to, that's a geopolitic, even in the country, between the country, you have to do that. So what is this water rights? How much water I own this level from the upstream to downstream? Not that because I'm downstream, I'm not, you know, because you control the water upstream. So this need to be negotiated. Then if the downstream, upstream, you pollute it, you come give me a bad water, you have to pay for it, right? So you have to that balance the agreement to do that. That's the four things in between to get that. Otherwise, it's going to be complex, right? You say that, you say that. The water quantity, water quality, and what the ecological, what the ecological health, right? What that's supposed to be. I think at least the agreement has to be among all the different regions, either the countries, either so uh, within the country, different parts of the regions. You need to get that talk what the balance we have, right? So you set that standard, then you do that. If you're up part, you have a little bit more pollution. If you want to up part, you want to get better water you know, with good quality to the downstream, then we to pay for it. So that's what we call the, the balance of the things you have to pay for the ecological degradation, or you, could, you want to keep that, the water in good quality, the downstream also have to pay for too, because upstream, they also own the right to have economic development, right? So that's, you know, for the CO2 release, the developer country always say, oh, you guys need to go as what we do. But hey, you already done, you know, 50 years uh, developing for your country. You literally see so much CO2 in the air. Who going to do that balance for that? So that's the Paris Agreement. That's a key other, you know, things. That's uh, Joe Biden two days ago talk about that. So there's no uh, negotiation, you know, among the country, among the region, how best we can balance that. So, you know, both of you, the question is so big. I'm not the, uh, you know, official, <laughs> I'm just the scientist. <laughs> Try to answer best uh, from that aspect, the how best we can, you know, address those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zowa. Uh, other questions, other comments? Sanja ima podignutu ruku, ne znam. Da, Sanja je iskoristila, da, da, ali Ozren, Ozren čini mi se hoće nešto da kaže, hoćeš li na srpskom, pa će sloboda najbolje prevesti. Pa da, ja bi na srpskom, pošto sam bio u kolima, pa mnoge delove nisam baš mogao dobro da čujem, postavljam da sloboda ne može da prevede na kineski, na engleski. Oh, well, I'll translate the question, so. Yeah, I got it, yeah. Okay. Jedno tehničko pitanje, primetio sam, čini mi se da je dosta veliki deo analiza prikazano na bazi monitoringa podataka. Interesujem je koje su statističke alate korišćeni za te analize i da li je provjeravana statistička validnost i značajnost tih rezultata. I slično, ukoliko je rađena neka analiza predikcije, da li je opet korišćena neke statističke alate za za analizu kauzalnosti, na primjer, i sa programom opet validnosti tih rezultata u pogledu dobijenih rezultata za kauzalnost za naredne periode. Znači, jedno obično tehničko pitanje, koliko se mogu da zvuči. I just wanted to say that it is really a good question. It is something what I asked before. Thank you. I understand that. You may understand a little bit. 
So we okay, are um, uh, avoiding to do the translation. Thank okay, Zongbo. So, so the question is the question is a kind of a little bit technical. Uh, 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 Mr. <clears throat> Ozren is asking uh, from your presentation, it was very clear that most of the data being used uh, in the analysis were collected by you know, your own observations and the observations that other researchers are doing in the area. So his question was related mostly to the processing of the data. Uh, did you use and what kind of statistical tools did you use to process the information? And uh, if you can comment on the statistical kind of validity of the information or the generated, you know, generated output. I think he is mostly referring to the predictions. And if you're ma making predictions, how representative are the how representative is the sample that you collected through your research? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question, it's really uh, to the science. Oh, I forgot to really to address uh, the previous uh, Zora and um, the other ladies' uh, questions. And also, I want to offer the the scholarship, and also we offer the 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 projects every year. We offer about 30 projects for everyone to apply to our lab. We give uh, you know, about 200K, I mean, the year for, especially for young scientists and students exchange. So, you know, my lab is paid for it. So I just want to let the students, because uh, to previous, uh, you know, the, the, the colleagues uh, raised the question, the students are interested in that. So here is a scholarship in China in my lab. So after the pandemic of COVID-19, so you guys all invite to come to visit us. So you can send a proposal in. And here we can, we can do that um, because of my lab, we do have resources for international collaboration, just all for the students and the colleagues uh, to come here. Otherwise, snowboarding will be here in Nanjing, not uh, sitting in the in the Canada <laughs> during the session. But anyway, for the colleague, uh, the question that's uh, very important. For the data I present here today, we don't do any statistical analysis. That's just the uh, blue force, the real data, okay? For the prediction, for the modeling, we do different kinds of uh, things we do that because uh, the data in one region may not be true on the other regions. So we do justify those uh, data here. We do the statistical analysis. Then we apply for other parts of the watershed. For example, they don't have data. They have less data. So we do the data fusion and also the data assimilation. Slow with the point observation, the radar observation, and satellite observation. So all also have a different scales and so forth. For example, if you have a rainfall gauge at a certain elevation, which is low elevation, if you have up elevation, the precipitation is different. So based on the, for example, based on the American answers, the old data, Nazi data, and NOAA data, we do a real analysis, how best we can bring those data to different parts of the watershed. So that's making they are more realistic. So that's a part of things. And come back, we do the statistical analysis. So we want to keep that. The statistically, they are pretty much the same for different regions altogether. Maybe for the level basing altogether, different parts, they could be changed different things because we don't have observation. So statistically, the data analysis, we do like a SARS, we do the SPSS, we do our own, you know, Clicking, we do a uh, average, we do a uh, distance and do and all the elevation and even with the different aspects. Or what I mean the mountain, for example, the mountain ridge face the east in Pacific Ocean. So that means when the wind bring the moisture coming in the east, they're gonna have more moisture. Then the other side they will be doing shadow. So we use those uh, topographic and the surface uh, roughness and the characteristic we try to adjust uh, those things. 
So I don't know the this is a big question. So there's so many different methods that we can do that, but you know. No, but it's a, I, th I think it's relatively clear. Ozrene nisam siguran da si ovaj razume odgovor. Odgovor je da ovo sve što smo videli u stvari i njihov fokus, a ja znam šta on radi, je mnogo više na razumevanje procesa koji se ovaj odvijaju u interakciji i na toj na tom platou, znači interakciji između snega, leda, atmosfere, kako temperatura utiče na mislim ovaj niz tih elemenata hidrološkog ciklusa. A on govori da 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 bi se statističke analize radile do smatranja moraju da budu ovaj dugoročnija i njima je mnogo izgleda značajnije koliko i kako se mogu ti podaci osmatranja znači na tipetskom platfou prebaciti ili iskoristiti u drugim ovaj regionima. Um, evo, to bi bio, ja mislim, spirit. Ja je postavio pitanje, mislim da taj aspekt kao statistička analiza nedostaje bar elementarno. Ovo je sve u redu, ali kažem, statistika ipak prikazuje, pogotovo kao zavnost neka koja može da se tu uvede. Mislim da, da, da je moguće da se uvede u redu. Zahvaljujem se. Thank you very much. Uh, more questions yes, for, uh, for your translation. Thank you. More questions, please. If not, Mr. Zong, thank you so much for, for your presentation. <laughs> you are, as you know, our group is uh, multidisciplinary in, in its nature. Uh, yeah. So uh, you are invited to, to, to follow our work uh, and to ask your colleagues also uh, from other disciplines to, to, to take participation in our group uh, board as, as, as uh, keynote speaker or, or uh, participants. So uh, once again, thank you so much for, 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 uh, for your participation and for, for your time. It's too late, yeah. I know, <laughs> China, you are, you are tired. So, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Zora. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you Zongbo. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Asana. Good to see you. you. Bye. Zora, ne kočiš ovo sve samo trenutak. Koču, koču. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. 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 Hoće da se čujemo telefonom jer posle mi je nešto... Može, može, ajde. Da, evo, čujemo se odmah, samo da isključim snimanje.